Hello and welcome to my video today on key performance indicators. I've received a lot of requests from my uh, visitors on the channel to talk about KPIs and also from friends and colleagues and those who I provide training to. Um, and the topic of key performance indicators can be, um, to some people, can be quite challenging uh, or may feel like it's a mystery or complicated. Even the term key performance indicator uh, or KPI just sounds a little bit uh, more executive or senior. And you know, it's because it is. Uh, a lot of times key performance indicators are actually being used to assess how well we are progressing uh, towards achieving some strategic goal or objective. So it usually starts with strategic goals and objectives and the expectation is that you, uh, whether you're a project manager or any other uh, role that you play in the organization, would be able to track how we are performing um, against that goal. Sometimes you are not given the KPI and instead you are being asked to develop the KPI. And that's where it gets really, really confusing for some. So what I'm going to do in this video is I'm gonna show you how you can develop a KPI um, and what sorts of measures you can put around it uh, in simple enough terms so that you'll be able to develop a KPI today. And by the way, my name is Edward Shehab. And if you are not a subscriber on this channel uh, and you'd like to see these types of videos uh, and related topics, then I suggest you click that subscribe button and the notification bell uh, so that you'll be reminded when I publish any of these videos. Um, so let's get started with KPIs. What is a KPI? A KPI or key performance indicator is an indicator or a measure of how well we are doing or progressing against a key objective, strategic goal, or some uh, criteria that your organization would like to see happen. Now, this could be any of a number of things that could be measured, and we will talk about that in a little bit. So why use KPIs? Well, KPIs are more of an objective measure of how we are progressing or how we are doing. Organizations can have a vision, a mission, goals, objectives. They can talk about what they wish to be. So for example, I could say, you know, my goal this year is to uh, walk more, all right? I wanna do a lot more exercise. Now, saying that is not enough for me to know if I actually did do it. Now, if I go and walk today and walk tomorrow and walk the day after, and then I skip a week, you know, there are times when I'm gonna feel like I don't really have a very good measure of how I'm doing versus my goals or expectations. So rather than just wishing and dreaming and thinking, it would be better if I can put some sort of a measure that indicates that I'm accomplishing this, right? So saying that I wanna walk on an average 30 minutes a day, um, every other day would be a nice way for me to put it concretely or objectively. And then I can check off every time that I do that. So that's what KPIs do. And that's why organizations need them. If I was hiring people to get something done, I need some means of measuring if that person is actually accomplishing what I asked them to do. So we need KPIs. Now, before we start putting together the KPIs, um, I need to mention here that KPIs need to have certain characteristics to qualify them as good KPIs. And there are six that I can think about. Number one, the KPI needs to be clear, uh, which means it's precise, it's unambiguous, people can understand what it is. So for example, I wanna walk 20 minutes a day. That's very clear, right? The other thing is that it has to be relevant to the organization. So if I said, I just wanna walk, uh, but I don't really mention why walking is important to me, it may not be really a relevant measure, right? So for an organization, talking about how many people walk through that door may not always be relevant, but maybe more relevant would be how many people walked in and came and asked a specific question or came to the cashier or came to concierge or came to customer service, right? So some things, are more important than others. And for every organization, the KPI needs to be relevant for, for it to be worth measuring. The other uh, characteristic is that it has to be economical. You can't have a K 
KPI that is too complicated for you to obtain, there's gotta be a way for you to easily collect this data so that you can be consistent uh, going forward in using this kind of data. The fourth characteristic is that it has to be adequate, which means that if we went ahead and spent the time and effort to collect this data, uh, then the results that we're able to get at the very end should be sufficient for us to be able to form some sort of a conclusion or opinion on how well we are performing. The fifth characteristic is that it has to be quantifiable. That means somebody needs to be able if someone wants to, they should be able to verify that information. There's got to be some source of data that tells us where this, where this information came from. The sixth characteristic is that it has to be trustworthy data. It cannot just be my own personal opinion. So in terms of quality, we typically like randomness. So basically, uh, you need to have a structure maybe of when you collect the data at different times of the day, but it has to be something we can trust, not something that we were able to compile from a specific month when we actually did well. Instead, it has to be all through. So these are characteristics that you need to keep in mind when you're trying to put together KPIs. Now, let's talk about how to put together the KPI. The first component of a KPI is the measure the item or the indicator that you wanna measure. And this could be anything. It could be a number, like number of customers, number of leads. It could be a percentage complete. So you can say, for example, 20%, 30% complete by this date, or it can be rate of change. So for example, 20% better than last year. Let me give you some examples. You could, for example, if you, and I'm gonna use an example of a, um, a call center or a help desk. Let's say a help desk, right? Uh, a technical help desk. Um, so one of the measures or one KPI you could use or measure you could use would be number of calls that were resolved on first call, right? So let's say you're calling a help center, right? And you need help with some device, maybe your, uh, I, your iPhone or your Samsung or whatever device that you bought and you're looking for a resolution. The percentage of these calls that were resolved by the help desk technician from the first call would be a very good measure, a good KPI. That tells you how well equipped that help desk technician is. Now, if, for example, the help desk technician were to help you with your problem, but it didn't really resolve it, and you have to call again, that's lower quality. So you can see how important this would be to an organization to measure how many times or what percentage of these calls are getting resolved on the first call. Now, if your goal is something like 90%, then nine out of 10 of these calls must be resolved on the first call. If you do not achieve that, then the organization can take actions um, or maybe development plans or improvement plans, enhancements, in order for them to be able to resolve them at a higher rate, which could include training that technician, the help desk technician, developing, for example, uh, manuals or reference guides that the help desk technician can look at so that they can uh, better be able to resolve things on the first call or maybe putting in layers of technical resources so that you know this call can be forwarded to the right technician so it is resolved on the first call. So you can see how this measure is an important measure for an organization. Now, within that discussion, you can see that I was referring to the relevance of this, right? So you can see that the number of calls that were resolved on the first call maybe is a better indicator of our performance than the number of calls received. The number of calls received could be any number, and that actually could be another indicator that could be important and relevant in other instances. So for example, if we charge the client, our client, let's say we are doing this for uh, Philips Medical or Panasonic or GE or whoever, um, and we charge for every one of these calls that come to us, then having more calls would be important. So here, the trick is to figure out what your organization or management really cares about, and you want to have that as a measure. It needs to be relevant to them um, so that when you measure it, it is important or they care about reviewing that report. Now, I talked about number or percentage of calls that were resolved on first call. Let's make it even better. Let's add a little more of a story to it. So let's say we wanna add uh, a percentage improvement. Last year, we were closing 90% of these calls on first call, right? And this year, we wanna be, let's say 5% better. 
5% better on 90% would mean that, you know, 5% of 90 will be four and a half. So that means we would have to close 94 and a half percent of these calls on the first call with the client. So you see where that's going. We've added one more measure, which is a percentage of change versus the previous year. Now, mind you, before you can measure anything going forward or report on your performance, you need to have the baseline data. Where are you now? How many of these calls are you resolving? How many of these calls to the help desk are being addressed or resolved on that first call? So if your goal is 90%, right, and your measure is percentage of calls that are being resolved in the first instance, what are you currently performing at? What level? Are you only closing 50%? Are you closing 30%? If you were closing 30% now and you want to be able to close 90%, that's a three times improvement. And that's going to take a lot of work and improvement for you to achieve that. A more realistic goal would be we want to close, for example, 20% more calls than we did last year. So 20% on top of 30% that would be six more, and so that's 36%. So you could work with percentage improvement, um, and you can see how that goes, right? So this is how you make that measure more relevant and more meaningful to your organization. So, so far, let's just recap a little bit. We've come up with a measure, and it has to be relevant, and we've talked about the target, which in this case was 90%. Who sets the target? Well, your organization typically sets that. It's because of some competition or some other data that they hear in the market, maybe some benchmarks out there, some references, they realize that it needs to be 40%, 50 or 90%. So that's usually an objective that you get handed down from the organization or from the management that says we need to be at this target. So now you have two components, you have the measure and you have the, and that measure is relevant and you have the target that you wanna achieve. Now, the third component is the data that says that this is how we are perform performing now. So you need to be able to collect data from a certain source. In the case of a help desk, this could be a data dump from the help desk CRM. So you need to figure the source of the data and the frequency where, of when you collect this kind of data. And it can be more than one source, by the way. There could be more than uh, maybe phone calls, could be inquiries that come through an online system. You need to figure the source of the data that will be used to measure your current status or your current performance versus that KPI. Um, so source of data needs to be reliable, credible, believable, and should be sufficient and complete for you to be able to form some sort of an opinion of how we are doing right now. So a data dump from the help desk could show that we had a thousand calls, let's say this month, um, and out of the 1,000 calls, 635 were closed on the first instance or first call. So that means we did 63.5%, right? So we need to have a good source of data. We need to know from where we get this data. We need to know when we collect this data. How often do we collect this data? Usually, there's a structure or system for how we collect this data. It cannot just be biased and maybe uh, pinpointed to a specific day like Monday, uh, in the morning where we collect this data. No, you need to have it more random, uh, more spread out so that it can be more reliable with you know, a smaller margin of error. The final component of KPIs is how you're going to report against this, right? So you have the measure, which is relevant. You have the goal that you want to achieve. You have your current performance, which you were able to get from data. Now you need to report to your management. And this can be done in any way that you like. So you want to show your current your baseline performance like for example in 2020 or 2021 this is this was our average monthly performance uh, our goal was to hit to hit 90 percent maybe uh, one point i forgot to mention when you set the goal usually there's a timeline so when you say we want to achieve 90 percent maybe by december of 2022 okay and so that's our goal maybe in the interim and i you know this may complicate it for you you may be expecting some sort of a curve. So you may map out that by March, we should be closing out, let's say 60% of all calls on first call, and maybe by June, so every, every quarter. By June, it would be 70%. By um, September, 
it would be 80%. And then by December, it would be 90%, right? So you're expecting this kind of a curve and you could report uh, on a quarterly basis uh, or monthly basis, how well you are doing versus this expected line of performance. And then you can present that to your management, all right? So uh, what's your current performance? What's your goal for that specific month or year? And how well are you doing based on the data that you're collecting? That's all I have for you right now. Hope this has been helpful. My name is Edward Shehab. Once again, if you have not subscribed and you enjoy these types of videos, please go ahead and click the subscribe button. If you think someone else would benefit from this, please feel free to share. I would really appreciate it. Don't forget, hit the like button also and the notification bell so that you'll be notified when I publish any new videos. Thank you for watching and hope to see you on the next video. Take care.